Here's an attempt to solve the famous 12 balls problem. We have 12 identical balls and one of them is faulty. In just three weighings, we need to identify the faulty ball and the fault. Well, these are the 12 balls and here are some color codes that we'll use throughout this video. White for untested, blue and yellow for heavy and light and gray for the ones that are confirmed to be normal. The bottom left corner will keep track of the remaining number of weighings. There are only two things that we need to know to solve the problem. If we know the fault, we can always find the faulty ball out of three in just one weighing. And even if we know the fault, we can never find the faulty ball out of four in just one weighing. Suppose we have three balls, nine, 10, and 11. And we know that one of them is light. We can simply weigh one of them against another. If the scale shifts to the left, we know that ball 10 is light. If the scale shifts to the right, we know that the ball 9 is light. If the scale balances, we know that both the balls 9 and 10 are normal. And in fact, ball number 11 is light. Since there are three different outcomes, we can easily map the three balls to each one of them. But if we have four balls to begin with, no matter how we arrange them, we'll never be able to find the faulty ball in just one way. Now before we begin, here's a flowchart of everything that we're about to do. For those of you who are here for a quick solution, you can skip the rest of the video. I hope you like the solution. Thanks for watching. For a detailed explanation, please continue. The first thing that we'll do is divide the balls into three groups of four and weigh two of them against each other. Let's weigh the first four balls with the middle four balls. If the scale shifts to the left, then either one of the first four balls is heavy or one of the middle four balls is light. If the scale shifts to the right, then either one of the middle four balls is heavy or one of the first four balls is light. If, however, the scale balances, then the faulty ball is amongst the last four balls. It could either be heavy or light. The first two cases are not much different from each other, so we'll look at the third case first. Since we know that the first eight balls are normal, weighing any three of them with 9, 10 and 11 will give the following cases. Either the scale shifts, in which case we know that the last ball is normal, or the scale balances, in which case we know that the balls 9, 10 and 11 are also normal. If the scale shifts to the right, then one of these has to be heavy, since they were weighed against normal balls. If the scale shifts to the left, then one of these has to be light. If the scale balances, then the last ball, ball 12, is faulty, but it could either be heavy or light. Again. The first two cases are similar and we'll deal with the third case first. For this case, all we need to do is weigh the last ball with any of the remaining balls. Depending on which side the scale shifts, we can find out if our faulty ball is heavier or lighter than the rest of the balls. The scale in this case will not balance because that would mean that all the balls are normal, which is a contradiction to the problem statement. Now that we're done with the third case, Let's move on with the first case of the same list. If one of these balls is faulty, it can only be heavy. So we'll weigh two of them against each other. Whichever side the scale shifts is to the side with the faulty ball. And if the scale balances, ball 11 will be the one which is heavy. This next case is identical to the one we just did. If one of these balls is faulty, it can only be light. So we'll weigh two of them against each other whichever side the scale shifts away from is the side with the faulty ball. And if the scale balances, ball 11 will be the one which is light. With this, we are done with all the three possible scenarios for case three. And this was the easiest one. Let's now look at the first case, which is the part for which this puzzle is really famous for. Either one of the first four balls is heavy or one of the middle four balls is light and we're left with just two weighings to figure out which one. We'll put two of the first four balls on each side of the scale. But before we weigh them, we notice that even if the weighing scales balance and all four of them turn out to be normal, there is no way that we can figure out the faulty ball out of the four middle balls with just one more weighing. So we'll put one of the middle four balls on one side of the scale. Now, since the left side has three balls, we'll put a normal ball to the right side to make the count equal. And now we weigh with the following possibilities. Either the scale shifts, in which case the leftover balls 6, 7, 8 are normal, or the scale balances, 
which is a really good case as all the balls except 6, 7, 8 are normal. Let's look at what more can be deduced if the weighing scale shifts. If the scale shifts to the right, it could not have been because of ball 9 and also not because of balls 1 and 2. Because if one of these two balls was really faulty, it would be heavy and would have shifted the scale to the left. Hence, balls 1 and 2 are normal in this case. One of the balls 3, 4 and 5 has to be faulty. If the scale shifts to the left, it cannot be because of balls 3, 4 or 5. Because if any one of 3 or 4 was really faulty, it would be heavy and the scale would have shifted to the right. And if the ball 5 was really faulty, it would be light and the scale would have shifted to the right. Since the scale shifted to the left in this case, we can safely suggest that the balls 3, 4 and 5 are normal. One of the balls 1 and 2 has to be faulty. If the scale balances, then we know that one of the remaining three balls is faulty, the fault being light. Let's look at the last case first. This looks easy now. One of 6, 7 and 8 is light. Weigh any two amongst themselves. If the scale shifts, we know the faulty ball. If it doesn't, we know the faulty ball. Looking at the first case of this list, one of the balls 3, 4 and 5 is faulty. Here's what we know. If one of 3 and 4 is faulty, then it is heavy. If both of them are normal, then the one left that is 5 is faulty and it is light. So we weigh 3 against 4. If the scale shifts, then we know the faulty ball. If it doesn't, then we know the faulty ball. This last case is even simpler. These two balls claim to be heavy. Weigh them against each other, the scale will shift towards the heavier one. With this, we have figured out how to find the faulty ball and the fault if we get a scenario like case 1. Time to look at case 2. But if we compare these two cases, we find that the scenarios are exactly the same. One of four balls heavy or one of four balls light and the remaining four normal. We can proceed in exactly the same way for case 2 as we did for case 1. And this is a complete list of all the possible scenarios that can occur if we try to find the faulty ball amongst 12 identical looking balls. And in all these cases, we have found the faulty ball in not more than 3 wings. There are a number of other ways to solve this puzzle, but all of them apply the first two principles that we discussed with rearrangements. That's all there is to this puzzle. Thanks for watching.